Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a brand new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4, the mod Old World Blues, Rise of the Conate version. Um, I've been recommended to play this for a little bit of time now, not a lot, but a little bit of time, and I thought I'd give it a go. Now, I want to let you know, right off the bat, that I have extremely limited experience with this mod. I played just a tiny, tiny bit, but I really don't understand it fully just yet. So if you don't understand it like me, then we're in for a really great uh, time together. So obviously there's a lot of factions here. This is taken taken from the Fallout New Vegas universe, or just, you know, Fallout universe, but basically, you know, relied upon the canon and material from Fallout New Vegas, which I've actually played before. So. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to end up playing as the New California Republic because that's probably one of the easiest. Obviously, Kaiser's Legion. Now you know I play. I played Fallout New Vegas before because I said Kaiser, not Caesar's. It's Kaiser's Legion. But I'm just going to play as the New California Republic because it's probably out of everyone here the most I'm familiar with, and I don't want to say easiest, but probably noob friendly. So, uh, custom game rules. Nothing really for anybody. Um, yeah, status of Utobitha. Um, okay, whatever. So, we're going to go with historical AI focuses, but I've not yet played an entire game as the New California Republic just yet. So, as a player, the Old World Blues New California Republic campaign in the early game may seem overly easy for many of the new conquests or and trials the NCR faces in the early game before facing the Legion. This is due to timing and sequencing with the AI, who even struggles with some of the basic conquests at times. Enhancing these nations, which will be on the warpath, may in fact provide a much more enjoyable campaign um, as the NCR without providing nerfs on the NCR's own power. Therefore, I'd strongly recommend you enable the following option if you have any substantial Hoi for experience whatsoever. So, uh, I'm not going to go with I'm a wimp, no thanks. I don't know about enhancing the bull, because, like I've said, I have extremely limited experience. So, usually, I'm just probably going to go with only enhance the others. Yes, I need to make sure that the Kaiser's Legion doesn't get a buff. Alright, so I'm a noob at this, but I'm going to treat this playthrough, this campaign, just like I would... I. Just like what I did with the Equestria at War mod. Because I played that, the My Little Pony mod. And honestly, that mod is actually still really good. So, I'm trying to keep an open mind here. Have a good time. We're going to get Colonel James Tzu in here as a field marshal. And start divvying up our guys. Chief Hanlon, Moore, and Gorobetz. Oh, man. Alright, so... I've, I've played as an NCR just a little bit before. Like I said, I don't really have a lot of experience, but what I do know is uh, focuses are very, very important, especially in the beginning. Um, honored Founders and stuff like that. But something that's important is a Baja Blues. Well, it's kind of important as far as I know. I could go with Hanlon, who's a guy we can choose, Hector eventually, or Hayes. Now, obviously, Hayes will get, make us turn more to te a technocracy. Hector will turn us into an autocracy. And then, of course, Hanlon will make us more of a democracy. Because I don't really know the mod that well, I'm probably just going to choose democracy. Because I've done that before. Uh, obviously, I can go to war against Baja California or the bandits that are down there. The Baja Integration Act. What does that do? Um, an official NCR state under a reformed bandito council. Um... Hmm, maybe. The state of ba Baja California. State of Baja State, huh. Um, we could become owner and controller of Colonet, now as a core Baja State, and becomes a puppet of us. Interesting. I don't know. Well, anyways, we need to choose the Honored Fathers first. Go ahead and train some regular NCR troopers. They're okay. Actually, I really don't know Um, what is best to add on here. Because usually you go 7-2 for your standard infantry division that can push just slightly. But with machine guns, obviously you get more soft attack than your infantry. But you actually get more defense. 
quite a bit more soft attack, a little more hard attack, a little more defense. Actually, with infantry, you get more breakthrough. That's interesting. You get less organization. Huh. I don't know yet, so I'm just going to... Militia. Eh, Militia's kind of like infantry. Just, just maybe a little bit worse. Except it uses less supply. Oh, actually, if you add in Militia, wait a second. That lowers your combat width. No, no, it only increases combat width by 1.5. Infantry make it go up by 2. And machine gun brigades make it go up by 3. Interesting, very interesting. Regardless, um, someone's going to probably tell me in the comments below, what is the optimal division uh, composition to use? Uh, let's see, research. I, I, I don't know, man. I'm just going to go with whatever it looks good, seems good. Uh, I would have liked to actually spend more time actually learning this mod before, you know, actually playing it in front of you guys, but actually I'm extremely busy right now, so I couldn't quite do that. I would have liked to, but I couldn't. Uh, resources. Oh, we're really, oh god, we're good on resources. Fuel, electronics, advanced technology, metal, electricity, water. Oh, well, maybe researching that water plant, water for purification plant wasn't really worth it. Um, let's just go ahead and build a lot of civilian factories. You know, take those off. Put that there first. Put those here first. Uh, 30. Anywhere that has 30 infrastructure. 40? Is that on a... I can actually build infrastructure uh, docks there, so I'll wait on that. Uh, 30. 20, 20, 20. Sure, whatever. Cool. <clears throat> Free dockers. Now, I don't know what ships to build. Super heavy barges sound like a lot of fun. They are like the super heavy battleships, which, look at that, that looks amazing. I love it, I want one of those. And then, regular barge, sailing ship. Oops, uh, I don't want to do that just yet. What does this look like? This looks like some sort of light cruiser, and then this looks like a destroyer. I really, like I said, I really don't know, so I'm going to go sailing ships. Do that. Uh, come to the boneyard just because it's level 10. What type of ships we got? Um, I'm okay with you being both independent. So do that. Put you under some guy named Anthony Arroyas. Cool. Uh, obviously, we don't have fuel. So go ahead and do this. That sounds like fun. Free military factories. We're going to need a lot of guns. Basic weapon, ballistic, basic ballistic weaponry. We're not going to use just basic melee weaponry. Scrap tanks sound like a good idea. Scrap motorcycles. Pipe machine guns. I'm probably going to switch to machine guns eventually for some stuff. Definitely a lot of support equipment. And then anti-tank rifle, just in case. I'm going to be doing my best with this. I really don't know exactly what I should optimally choose or not. But let's get started. So, obviously, we're in California. New California Republic. There's Cascadia. Oh, honored... F oh, boy. I'm clicking the wrong button here. Whoops, my bad. I was clicking the 9 button instead of the minus button. Cool. Honored Father. So, the beloved of the Republic. Among the historical records of the NCR, there are a number of figures that stand out as quintessential to the Republic, yet, who among them is most celebrated in propaganda and education? Who shall appear on the most important pieces of currency, be mentioned in speeches, and stand above the rest as the figurehead of the new California Republic? The three essential figures in the history of the NCR are thus... Aradesh, more stability and war support. Which sounds like we can usually always get more stability and war support anyways. Tandi, the mother of the Republic, for more political power gain and a little bit of stability. I like the extra political power gain. Seth, the first ranger, the NCR's greatest war hero. Um, more soft attack for spec ops and hard attack defense. But we also get a little bit of stability and war support. I don't really know how much of spec ops I'm really going to use. Especially if we're going to get into a massive war with Kaisar's Legion. So, I like political power, and since I'm a noob at this game, I'm just going to choose the mother of the Republic. We're going to love our mommies. That's right. All right. So, this time, I'm going to make sure I actually watch where my fingers are. Okay, I can speed it up and slow it down as much as I want. That has not changed. And since I'm playing as the NCR, this is what I normally do when I begin. And the motorized... Uh, I don't want to give that to the motorized. Uh, let's have the spec ops go into Gorobits. 
And I'll have you guys train when you get down there. That'd be good. And I don't think we have any Air Force. Really cool. So, we're going to build a lot more factories. Ooh, Tandy's scheming. Tandy devoted her life to the cause of the New California Republic, and early in her life, her ideas faded, though, and she was faced with honest pragmatism. She made a series of hard choices, many of which did not necessarily earn her the adoration of her people. Of the choices Tandy made, the most notable are, <laughs> you bring democracy to this land, uh, the Nevada Trade Agreements, which takes away 5% of your consumer goods, people like you more, the NCR Draft, more population but less stability, I don't think I like that, stability is okay for now though, the Water Distribution, Redistribution Act. We get a little bit less wars, but we do get more monthly population. Now, population, manpower in this game, is drastically reduced because, you know, it's only on one coast of a continent. So, um, we can always get more war support. I know that for a fact. So, I don't mind getting more population. We might not need that extra population, but I don't want to take a hit to stability. Population's nice. Recruitable population, that is. And I don't want to lose consumer goods. Uh, let's do this one because this can't hurt us someday, right? This, this won't bite us in the butt. Oh, god dang it. Man, when you unpause, it goes so fast. Development of the Republic is next. Alright. Look how, look how fast that is. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so fast. Alright, I pause it. Ooh. So, the NCR development plan was one of the most hotly debated subjects in NCR political history as it called for a centralization of what had up until that point been a largely diverse agricultural nation. The debate raged for months as to whether or not or to even bother with this plan, but eventually it was decided that the bill should be focused on the development of a specific area of the economy, be it the reconstruction of roads, subsidizing select local businesses, or additional funding towards arms manufacturing. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thirsty, guys. Whew. Subsidize local businesses for two more factories in one, two, three, four areas. Wow, four more civilian factories. Infrastructure and four areas, which we can always build later. Arm fundament, arm fund armament manufacturing in four places. We get four military factories or eight civilian. I'm going to go with the eight civilian because we could always use more factories. Awesome. And before I unpause it, Fato for Navarro. All right, does this... Oh, we got five more civilian factories used. Nice. Just keep building those up, boys and girls. Ooh, what's this? An outpost. Inflicts an, an attack penalty of minus 8% for each fort level on the attackers in combat. I did not know that before. Huh. Very, very interesting. Ah, there we go. The Battle for Navarro. On the eve of the final assault, the acting general of the NCR's army, Alexander Drummond, Drummond, received a personal visit from the president herself. Tandy made it clear to him that the NCR could not afford a slaughter and advised him to hold back the majority of his troops during the assault. Meanwhile, the commander of the Brotherhood of Steel had already gone and approved plans with Drummond, a joint attack that was dependent on the NCR providing a sizable distraction. All the while, Drummond had grown increasingly frustrated with the entire situation and knew that he might regain much of his lost honor if he ordered an overwhelming charge and claim the majority of Navarro's treasures for the NCR, a reckless move that could save his career. We could go with holding back our troops, in which we would lose a little bit of manpower. Ooh, we got a lot of debuffs. Gains Brotherhood Assault. He committed to the Brotherhood's plan to lose even more manpower. Oh, this actually hurts you more for technology, and or for at least um, robot equipment build time. Or I lose 4,000 manpower, and the penalty for energy weapons is less, as well as pretty much everything else. Uh, oh, recruitable population minus 0.1%. Oh. Um, I'm going to go with he committed to the Brotherhood's plan, because I don't want to lose 1%. I don't mind 0.5. And this way they'll still like us. This seems like the most balanced option to choose. And then Council, Council Hill. God dang it, my, my keyboard's far away. What the heck? There we go. There we go. All right. And I also don't want to spill my coffee here. I do have coffee here, by the way. Um, it's open cupped, so if I tip it over, coffee's going to get all over the place. And that wouldn't be very good. All right. I'm playing with the mouse wheel. It looks like Kaisar's Legion's already at war with someone. 
some hairs, twisted hairs. So cool. Um. Okay, so this focus must be something else. Council. Yeah, oh, it's 60 days. Okay, so we have national spirits. We get more monthly population. Lose a few consumer goods. We're tooling firearms production. So we need to get rid of that so we can get back our infantry equipment production cost to be normal. We have Tandy, Mama of the Republic. Ah, oh, love it. Actually, get 1.34 political power a day. Good. Monopolies, we get less war support, but we get more monthly population. Colonel Cassandra Moore falls ill. And. A legacy of Navarro, obviously we have that. That's not really good for us. But regardless, we have it nonetheless. So what do we need? We need guns and support equipment. But honestly, this is not too bad. Anti-personnel. Um, three. Make that go down to one. Actually, put you up here. Put the ships at the bottom. I think we'll be okay on ships for a while. Uh, I mean, I really don't know. So we have the NCR Congress under Wendell Peterson. Dislikes Kaiser's Legion. Old World Party from the Intellectuals and the Barons. Boneyard Separatists, huh. And of course, throughout the world here, we have, of course, Kaiser's Legion, who is mostly non-aligned elites. Well, rulers, I guess. Oh, wait, they're No. They're elites, but majority is ruler. Hmm. Lessons of the Old World. Cult of Mars. Let's get more attack. Ooh. Rejection of Automation. That's why I didn't choose Kaiser's Legion, just because building factories would really suck. Actually, quite a few factories, though. Ooh. I got a lot of manpower, too. Weapon, maintenance, ridgers, pyre, divide et impera. Interesting. Playing as Kaiser's Legion would be very, very much fun, though. I will say that. So, um, this, I'm going to make a decision right now that will alter probably what we can do in the future. So, I'm going to go ahead and do Baja Blues, in which I'm... Probably going to choose Ranger Deployment so I can get to war instantly against the Baja Californians and make sure that uh, I get Baja California, basically. So, right now we've got a little bit of extra political power. Ruthless Capitalist, huh? Hmm. Justify War Goals time. Minus 5% recruitable population, my goodness. Gunrunner, well, that's not bad. Followers of the Apocalypse, oh, minus five. Oh my goodness. Uh, less stability, which is okay. Old World Blues, I would like that one probably the most. Interesting. Um, military Theorist. Probably, I'll probably, let's just go ahead and go with Military Theorist if there's no good decisions. For this, we get less weekly war support, but more weekly stability. I can't get any more... Ooh, we lose research speed, but we get more stability. Because stability, I'm going to lose a lot of stability. What I'm going to do... We'll lose a little bit of research speed. I think that'll be okay, since we're, we're pretty big. I think we're pretty powerful right now. I don't want to lose war support. Let's do this, because I will need more stability. So, let's do that. And I'm going to screw this up for people here. Uh, just because I'm going to choose a path probably that people really don't care about. But whatever, the Baja Blues, the year 2256, the NCR colony of Rattletail was established in the northern portion of Baja, California by some volunteer colonists who advanced with formal funding and merit from the NCR, but with little to no supervision or military protection. This choice would prove almost fatal for the young colonists, who elected to, by force, take control over the primary water source in the region, a fact that they were ignorant to do at the time. Oh boy. The locals retaliated against this small settlement due in part to desperation and launched two, two major assaults against the township, both of which were stomped or stopped with relative ease. It was the intervention and wisdom of a young ranger named Hanlon that ended the dispute before the toll of the conflict became notable. The man crafted a clever lie, spouting nonsense about an army of raiders that would soon come and wipe the town away. The colonists evacuated, the locals regained their water supply, and the greater conflict was avoided. Unfortunately, this lie had an unintended result. It implanted in the locals the notion that the NCR was afraid of raiders, slavers, and other violent sort. The locals of Baja had almost a decade to prepare for the return of the NCR, and in preparation for that coming, they have adopted a violent, cruel lifestyle. Baja is now home to an up-and-coming Mexican cartel, one that will be almost impossible to dislodge without violence. Ooh. The path in the future is a complicated one, and there are only a handful of men in the NCR who have the potential to deal with this problem. Who do we appoint to oversee the handling of Baja? 
or the Baja Frontier. So this is going to be very important because in our focus tree here, who you choose depends what you do with Baja California. But Rangers, we could become more democratic, get a little more political power, actually a little bit more political power, not too bad. Uh, we get Annex War Goals, actually it's not too hard to take them out, it's pretty easy. If we do this, we get less political power. Oh, we actually get some infrastructure and purification stations. Less consumer goods for a while. And the state of Baja. Um, born fruit, pacified. And the political banditos. Less political power. And then quite a few places. Wait. One, two, three, ten places get civilian workshops and arms factories. And then we can eventually integrate them. Huh. Now, if, obviously, these all have an ideological component to them, and I'm going to screw this up so badly because I don't know what exactly I need to do. So, yeah. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of things that I don't know yet. But, uh, oh man. You know what? I'm going to choose the path that I think that will be okay for us. I'm going to say we're probably going to go ahead and go with just democracy I know it's a vanilla thing to do, it isn't super exciting, but I'm going to go with Hanlon right now. And if enough people complain, like, I mean, maybe, I will go ahead and reverse my decision and kind of restart the game. But I'm not really going to do that, so. Anyway, so we've chosen democracy. God dang, I can't put my coffee anywhere here. So we've chosen the path of democracy. Oh, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. Oh, my God. I need to go watch Star Wars again. Uh, Star Wars Episode 3. Oh, it's probably my favorite. Oh, so good. Such good stuff. You guys can stop training since you're all uh, expert trained peoples. We don't have quite enough army XP, but we're going to boost our way to the finishing of this focus. Awesome. Ranger deployment. People don't like us. We're a little bit more de democratic. And we'll give them the ultimatum. Awesome. Ooh, we have actually an extra ranger volunteer. They're only eight combat width, which kind of sucks. But I'm going to throw you onto here. All right, then. Modify government. There's nothing we can really... Oh, we can do more weekly stability. I don't want to lose war support. I don't want to use my factories either. So, let's go ahead and do this. So, <clears throat> in this mod... Things have definitely changed. The land auctions, I don't know which land auction is actually really good to go under. Um, so, usually I think I'll probably go conventional warfare unless unless someone here in the comments, in the audience here, <clears throat> can tell me the difference between all these. Because conventional warfare sounds just like Grand Battle Plan. Automated warfare, of course, is mobile, mobile warfare doctrine. Refined warfare is superior firepower, at least it probably looks like. But... This one actually reduces the amount of recruitable population you get. And I don't like that. I don't like taking things that debuff me or make me worse. Obviously, if you play as New Vegas, or I think it's New Vegas, you would have a lot of robots, what are they called? Some Trons things. Um, I forget what they're called. But regardless, Trooper Fatigues, cool. Oh, pause it. Oh, god dang it. Didn't pause it in time. Whatever. Let's see. Basic energy weapons. Pistol. That's good. This does nothing. Well, at least there's no picture for it. Dynamite gecko... F oh, fire gecko stuff. <gasps> Auto laser rifle. Ooh. What else is down here? Trained mongrel. That sounds like fun. Medical chem. Oh, this is the... Um, field hospital. Nice. A vehicles. Uh, engineering. Oh, yeah. Get a bit of reinforced rate. We'll need that. And I'll oh, definitely do that. And then we'll go for another for a boost in land doctrine after this. Ranger ultimatum, nice. And now we will go with retaking rattle tail. Honestly, this isn't very hard. I've I've done this part before, so it's not too bad. So P Pancho Villa, wait, Pancho Villa's it's twenty two seventy five. This must be a different Pancho Villa than what I'm used to. They don't have very many divisions. And Juarez, Juarez, not too many divisions or manpower either. So. Enhanced NCR campaign. Wow, what is that? That's a really awesome buff. Holy cow. Oh, that's because I enabled it at the beginning. Oh, okay, so that makes more sense. Cool. Retaking Rattletail. Um, yeah, not bad. Wendell Peterson's War. Oh, I can change who I want to have under 
like direct command. Um, I'm gonna go with civilian stuff first, or actually, I can't do the bear roars not yet. I need to expand the NCR Military Academy first, which is somewhere. So we'll do the capital funds. Next up, we got actually oh, a couple extra divisions. Nice. So you guys, honestly, with 12 divisions here, I think we'll be okay. I really think we'll be okay. And using what, what combat width are we? 16. 16 combat width. Heart attack pr sucks pretty badly. That's all right. We got some recon companies on these bad boys. Yeah, taking these guys out not a problem at all. Even I can do this. Awesome. It's really no competition. It's almost too easy to do that. But then again, that's why they asked if I wanted to buff uh, my enemies. So. Alright, so these are the Rangers. I don't exactly remember the lore that much of Fallout New Vegas. I actually... The first time I played Fallout New Vegas was within this past year, to be honest with you guys. I didn't really play it before. And, until like 2019. I know, that's terrible. But... I think this should be okay. Max, oh, that's his planning. Oh, defense. But, uh, yeah. Not bad. You know what? You know what? Here's what we're going to do. Because I have a limited amount of time today, I'll talk about Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, and 4 later on. But, uh, here's what I want you guys to tell me. What land doctrine should I go under? Because I'm not really sure, like I've said. And I want some of your input in here, too. So, tell me what I need to know about, uh, Old World Blues. Tell me what I should do. And what or what direction I should take, as well as what should my next step be after we're done with Baja California. So with that in mind, guys, thank you very much for watching the new start or the you know basically our new campaign here. Um, leave a like if you like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you tomorrow as we wrap up Baja California and step onto a new direction. Thank you very much for watching.